In this video today, we're going to create a color lithophane, and it's going to be backlit by a puck light. We can create a color lithophane. And this is the photograph we are going to use to create our color lithophane. All right, this is the puck light I'm going to use. This is approximately less than 85 wide and depth wise it's less than 25 millimeters. Now we're going to create the lithophane STL file and so we're at the itslitho.com website. We are going to upload the image that we're going to use then we're going to come to model. The shape, we want it to be an arc. And I'm going to leave all the rest of the arc parameters the same. And I'm going to leave the frame parameters as the defaults. The quality options, I'm going to leave as the defaults. We want to enable the lamp. I am going to modify the distance for the lamp from 50 millimeters to 35 millimeters. And what that is going to do is it's going to lessen this. So at the 50 millimeters, that's going to make this further apart from the puck light to the lithophane. So I like to shorten that distance. So we're going to do that 35. We're going to change the fitter to a puck. The light height, this needs to be greater than the thickness of your puck light. Ours was less than 25 millimeters thick. The height thickness, I'm just going to leave at the 2 millimeter. The thickness diameter, this is the diameter of your puck light. In our case, that was 85 millimeters. I like to increase the angle of the puck light here to 65 degrees. And so that you notice it increased the angle a little bit. The base height, cut position, all the rest of these, I'm just going to leave the defaults. And for the connectors, I'm going to change the height of the connector here from 10 to 5. And so what that did is it lowered the height of these uh, connectors here, connecting the puck light to the lithophane. Now, the one other thing we want to be aware of, you'll notice that our puck light is wider than the lithophane itself. So we want to make sure that our height and our width is going to cover the puck light. So the width of our puck light is 85, and then we've set the diameter of the puck light holder here to be two millimeters on each side. So we want to make sure the width is at least 90 millimeters so that we can hide the puck light when we're viewing our lithophane. So I'm going to just start changing my height. We'll start at 120. And that's not quite enough. Let's go up to 130. And I'm adjusting this until I get my width to be about 90 millimeters. And so now you can see over here, we are hiding our puck light. And so that all looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click download. And then we want to download the lithophane. And so this is downloading the STL file. Now we also want to get the color lithophane portion. So we're going to click on color lithophane. We don't need the normal one. This is produced so that if you're doing a resin lithophane, you can use the normal color. So we're going to just cancel on that one. And then this is the one we want. 
And so we'll go ahead and save it. So now we've got our lithophane STL file and we've got our JPEG file for the color portion. All right, now we're going to want to print out the image file that we downloaded from the It's Litho website. So we're going to right click on it. I'm working on a Windows 10 computer. I'm going to open with Paint. You're going to want to print this out without any resizing. We want it to print out the same size as it was downloaded from the It's Litho website. So we're going to come over here to File. We're going to go to Print. We're going to do a print preview. We're going to go to Page Setup. We want to make sure for the scaling we adjust to 100% normal size. Then we'll click OK. Then we'll go to Print. I'm going to use an Epson ET15000 uh, series computer, I mean printer, inkjet printer. So I'm going to come to Preferences and the paper quality. I am going to print it from the rear feed. I'm doing plain paper. You want to pick some kind of a copy paper that's as thin as possible. You don't want it to be too thick of a paper. I'm going to come to Advanced. I'm going to print it at the best quality that I can. So I am going to change the quality settings here so that it's the best it can be. Then click OK. Click OK again. And then I'm going to print it. All right, here's the sheet that we printed out from the paint program, and we're going to want to trim it along this outline here. And so I'm going to just put this in my paper trimmer. And so here we are, and you notice there's a slight border around it. And now we are ready to slice and print out our lithophane. So if you're using Cura Slicer, we are going to load in the lithophane STL file that we got from the It's Litho website. It's already facing the orientation that you want. When you print out lithophanes, ideally you want them standing up and facing from the back to the front, just like it's doing here. The It's Litho website tends to place its STL files in the correct position. So in order to print out a lithophane, we're going to make some changes. We're going to start with the standard quality, 0.2 millimeter. We're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and we are going to be printing out with just some generic white PLA. So the changes that we're going to make is under quality, we're going to change our layer height to 0.12 millimeters. We're going to keep the initial layer height at 0.2 because that way we're going to get a little bit better adhesion to the base. The wall line width, we are going to change that to 0.45 millimeters. And for the walls, we're going to increase our wall count to 10. That is probably overkill, but uh, that way we want most of the lithophane portion itself to be walls. And we want to make sure that print thin walls is checked. Next, we're coming down to infill. We want to change our infill density to 100% because we don't want to have any voids at all in our lithophane. The infill pattern, we want to be lines. We are going to increase our printing temperature to 210. You may want to adjust that according to the PLA that you're going to be using. I like to use the Creality PLA and I find I get good results with 210. The speed, we're going to want to slow down the speed a bit. So we want our print speed to be at 45. Wall speed, we're going to increase to 30. The top bottom speed, 25. Travel speed to 80. Initial layer, 
travel speed, we're going to change that to 45. You want to make sure that you don't have support checked. We will have no support. The bill type adhesion, we're going to set to raft, and we'll set our raft margin to 5 millimeters. And then you can go ahead and slice this. And if we preview it, this is what it's going to look like. And so in this case, I would be sending this to an Ender 3 Neo. I would just save it to an SD card. It will take approximately 12 hours and 10 minutes to print out. But I actually also have a Bamboo Lab P1S, and that's the one we're actually going to use. And so we'll go through those settings next. All right, I now have Bamboo Studio loaded. So I'm going to come up here to File, and we are going to import the file that we created from the It's Litho website. Now I am using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. We're going to be using the textured PEI plate. And I have some Creality White PLA in slot number three of my AMS. And I also have some bamboo support for PLA in slot number four. Now we are going to start with the 0.12 millimeter fine setting. And we're going to make some changes. So under quality, we're going to scroll down to the bottom for advanced, and we want to change the order of the wall from outer, inner, inner, infill. Next, we're going to go to strength, and we are going to change this to four wall loops. We want to detect thin walls. We want to change our percent infill to 100%. And when, I, when we do that, it's going to limit what uh, pattern we can use. So we're just going to use the default that it says. So we're going to say yes. Next, we are going to come to support. You want to make sure you do not check enable support. But we are going to create two raft layers. Now, if you are not going to be using the support for PLA material from Bamboo Labs, I recommend increasing the raft contact Z different distance. At least on my machine, the 0.1 millimeter makes it too tight of a hold onto the bottom of the lithophane and it's very difficult to remove that raft. And so I would increase this maybe to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters. But in our case, I'm going to use the support for PLA. So we're going to change both the support raft base and the support raft interface to the support for PLA material. And it's asking us if we want to make some recommended changes. You're going to say yes. And then under others, we want to make sure that the prime tower is enabled. And so now when we go to preview, and it will take a while to slice because the It's Litho lithophanes are really pretty large. And so now we are ready to go ahead and print the plate. This is where you're going to tell it which positions it is. Our white PLA is actually in position number three in the AMS, and our support for PLA is in position number four in the AMS. And you'll notice it's going to take approximately five hours and use about 54 grams of the, the material. And then you just click send. My printer right now is pr busy printing another job. But when you print send, or when you click send, it will send the job over to your printer and start printing. All right, and our 3D print is done. And so now we have to put this on the back. And it should just fit perfectly, except for it's a little bit too high. And when you turn the light on on the back, it's up just a little bit too high. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut off the bottom so that it's even with where the color ends and only the bottom. So I still have the white border around the tops and the side but the bottom has been cut clean. And I'm going to use some Krylon Easy Tack to connect the paper to the back of the lithophane. So I'll just spray a light coating on there and then I'm going to place it centered on the back. The bottom is going to be resting on the supports here. And 
sentence. So now we have got our finished piece. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.